Yes, everybody is here. Palace and Samuel from the Gays Against Groomers. Is is it an organization? What 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 is it, Palace? Yeah, it's an organization of gays and others in the community that are against the indoctrination, the sterilization, and the medicalization of children, all under the guise of LGBTQIA. I, I don't even know what the N words are because it's that exhausting. We're kind of at that point where we kind of have to start speaking up about these things because what they're doing in our name is highly inappropriate and it shouldn't stand in modern society. So for those of you who don't know, Jamie Mitchell started the Gays Against Groomers in 2022. And uh, Samuel, please, please tell me why. I, I want to know this because I, you don't come across many uh, gay people who don't who aren't into pride month but clearly gays against groomers are not very pride month uh happy friendly what what's what's the deal you guys are supposed to like pride month rah 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 rainbow flags what's the deal no it's it's actually the worst month out of the year for us because um it's the time where we see these people that have hijacked our community and they're just out there doing complete filth uh, pornography in the streets, uh, exposing children to the most hor horrendous things. And it's all just, you know, well, we can't do anything because, uh, you know, it's not, we got to be inclusive and we got to show equality and just forget the laws that, you know, and, and safeguarding children. It's, it's a terrible month for us. It used to be wonderful, but it's just not that anymore. And Samuel, do you feel, and uh, Palace as well, do you feel as if like a lot of gays feel like they're almost pushed into this against their will in a sense to kind of go this route, this extreme into it, and that maybe they're not mm -hmm. so there and, and they're a little hesitant to take on the, the views and the role you guys have? Well, it's force teaming. You're force teaming different subsets of people all clumping them, in, them into something that they may not necessarily agree with. When you think about gay rights, what we fought for decades ago, it was really about having the right to marry, having the right to just live a normal life and have those kind of protections under the law. What we've seen transpire over the decades, slowly but surely, they're trying to, it's, it's almost a form of ideological subversion that's crept into our way of life here, especially in the United States, also in Western societies, um, through the public education system, through the media, where you have this kind of subversive ideology that's kind of tinted in Marxism. I mean, it's Marxism mm -hmm. when you really think about it, this kind of trans ideology that's that's tainted and not necessarily up to public scrutiny. You know, when we think about wanting to have this kind of public discussion, it's immediately shot down uh, for feelings, for being kind. Well, we want to be nice, so we don't want to talk about these things. Well, we've gotten to the point now where in 2024, women's spaces don't exist. Children are being subjected to this kind of indoctrination through the school systems, through the media. And it's something that we at Gays Against Groomers are adamantly against. Not only that, but you know, it's it's sad to it's sad to think that we're labeled a hate group and an online extremist only because we want to protect children. They're doing this all under our name, and a majority of gay people and others in the community they don't agree with it. And a lot of people feel coward. You know, I wouldn't say that people are cowardly, but people are thinking about, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to speak up because I don't want to lose my job. It's a list of things that go along the way, but we're getting to that point where the Overton window is opening. So right. there is an opportunity coming to where we're speaking up about it. And gender trap is definitely something along the way of wanting to be more open about you know, dispersing this into the public. So, right. yeah, right. but and we're definitely out there. I mean, we're, this whole organization is made up of, you know, moms, dads, siblings, you know, uh, fathers, like the people we're out here, but like palace said, you know, it's, it's that woke, mob that people are so afraid to speak out against because you get canceled and and it's it's absolutely wild that we who, who should be able to play that card we're getting canceled in our own community yeah and what i find wild is like from my perspective is that you guys are level-headed normal logical to me you're, you're making sense and you're viewed by them as the extremists where i would see them more as an extreme type mm -hmm. and it's just this i it's this maddening feeling of just oh, not yeah. understanding Dude, it wikipedia has us listed as a homophobic far right, far right. Yes. yeah and i know wikipedia is blah but you know but that's what's out there people take a quick right. look and they immediately have us mislabeled like we're we're phobic of ourselves that's the stupidest thing i've ever yeah. freaking heard like how never never understood it and i 
you know, I, I still don't. And uh, you, you, you can let the f bomb fly, Sam. I know you edited okay. yourself. I was holding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the book is the gender trap. It's in my hand. It's available to pre-order now. You can go to the gender trap dot com. Is this book, Palace? I'm going to go to you. Is this book a declaration of war? on the transgender community who targets children. Is that what this is? Are we going well, we to war here? No, well, we didn't start the war, but you best believe we're going to finish it. Hmm. We have the statistics. Well, they're all coming out now, but we, we do have the stories of detransitioners and their parents. You know, that book, The Gender Trap, it's designed for parents who have kids that are going through this monstrosity of a horror show that is gender affirming care or gender ideology. It's also for those that are puzzled by radical transgenderism, like wondering how did this get into the United States? How did this get into the UK? Like what had happened here? It's also for those that feel like they're ostracized simply for stating the obvious. It's all just a big freak show. So with Carla Curtis, an amazing, amazing writer that has depths of research into this particular topic. It was the perfect fusion between the two because it was an opportunity for us to really sink our teeth into some real statistics, some real data, and it's very heavily, thoroughly researched many times over. It's something that we're very proud of and we can't wait to share it with the world because the world needs to hear about this. And like I said at the beginning, you know, we didn't start this war, but you best believe we're gonna be the ones to finish it. Yeah, absolutely. We're never going to make peace with these monsters ever. And this book has thrown down the gauntlet. It is going to be a roadmap for people to understand what's happening, family members, people going through it, people who are just getting on board and don't and don't know and they're trying to educate themselves. This, this is just opening up a, a library to these people so that they can really get honed in on what's happening and, and the stats behind it and so on. But yeah, absolutely throwing down the gauntlet. Let's go. Uh, the back here, I just want to read this, the setup here. If you are a parent whose son or daughter is questioning their identity, if you've ever wanted to be the opposite sex because you feel you don't fit in, if you're tired of being pigeonholed into a box labeled this or that gender, if you have ever been silenced just for pointing out this agenda, or if you wonder how radical trans ideology has infiltrated all areas of life, then this book is for you. So, Samuel, how would you respond to people who say that it's all about making children feel accepted? Because that's going to be the main point that you're going to hear, or you probably have already heard, in your when you're looking at this the trans agenda and everything else. And when they interview drag queens and they interview anybody else, it's always about we want everybody to feel included and loved and 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 respected, and 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 your thoughts, Samuel, would be that how how does this book make how how would something this trans ideology how does it make children feel accepted? We all grew up in school. You know, it, it was we we went through the hard knocks of life. We grew through a lot of the things that we were confused about as children. You know, we're 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 ugly, puberty's weird, all this stuff, but we're organically allowed to go through it. And then we come out understanding ourselves better um, after that. That's what's being interrupted, and it's being done very intentionally. These they know that these children are vulnerable, and then you're interrupting that awkward puberty years and telling them that you know you you you're in the wrong body. The, what they're doing is absolutely what they're they're saying that we're trying to stop these ki kids from being safe and and that they to be themselves that's what they're stopping because organically and the numbers are there like you you know there was a, a one study uh, with boys who were you know trans and, and and dealing with the trans ideology and then after puberty like 88% or something or maybe even higher were were no longer interested in doing any of the puberty blockers or transitioning you got to let these kids be kids and find themselves and 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 that's what they're they're actually doing to the kids what they're claiming we're doing and that's stopping them from being happy and being accepted and being who they are because there's nothing wrong with them these kids there's no such thing as being born in the wrong body it, it's absolutely it's it's just it's if it wasn't so serious it would be a fucking joke like it really would palace you I use anything? that for you there <laughs> yeah i like that <laughs> good work no censoring here none well, I, I just think back to being a, a closeted gay kid in, in school 
you know, I would have been susceptible to gender ideology very, very quickly. That there would have been a teacher that pulled that would have pulled me aside and said, "Hey, do you do you think that you're a boy?" Because I was a tomboy growing up. So I think about that. So you know, if someone were to ask me, "Well, you know, you should let these kids just be," it's like, "Yeah, you should let these kids just be. Leave the kids alone. Let them go through the process of growing up because that is part of the human process. When you take that away, you are you are essentially you're you're pretty much destroying their 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 life you know for the long term yeah and if i can so, add to that like palace makes a great ahead. point there it's 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 um you know they're again they're doing to these children what they're claiming we're doing that stopping them from being happy and being them true their true selves had i been any had any intervention at my you know growing up period where i was so confused and somebody had just come to me and said hey yo if you just take these pills if you get this surgery if you you know take these hormones all your problems are going to go away. You're not going to feel insecure. You're not going to get bullied. The dudes that you're finding attractive, guess what? Those are going to be your boyfriends because you're going to be a female now. I would have, I would have been so hook, take that hook, line, and sinker, and my life would have been ruined. That's what we're out here saving these kids from. That let these kids be have their organic childhood. And I, I just, you know, <laughs> madness. I don't have any kids. Okay, I don't have any. But Madness has has two daughters, and and Madness, what would you, I mean, you know, yeah. you know, I, I was mean, gonna I was gonna put it out there. You know, you guys are ingrained in this, and the experts, um, and I'm just looking out for my two daughters, ten and seven. Um, you know, getting to those impressionable ages, um, and you know, I send them to public school. So I know there's a you know a lot of good schools out there. Not all doing this kind of stuff. I don't I, I don't believe. But what what can I look out for? You know, what can I look out for? What, what behaviors can I look at in my kids to maybe see if, or what can I ask them if they're being told anything in schools of this? And, um, and I'll let you answer that and then I'll, I'll ask my second part. I think one of the things is, is parents need to use their children as their little secret service people or spies in, in school. Come home and have a report. What'd you learn today? Let me see the material. That's what we're finding. A lot of these parents are finding this out. They're, they're reviewing what was uh, gone over that week or what the lessons were. And they're like, wait, this is a little weird. And the kids don't really know to say anything. They don't really understand yet how weird it is. So to check in with your children, know what's going on at any time. Um, I think any public school, um, it's uh, I think it's the acronym is FERPA. You can, you can request what is going on with your child, both their behavior, their academics, their grades at any time in the school by law has to give that to you. Parents should be checking in with their children and with their school and with their teachers on a regular basis weekly. Right. Absolutely. In terms yeah. of in, in in terms of like what to look out for, because I think you mentioned 10 and seven, uh, particularly girls. I would definitely look out for changes in behavior. Like if if it's something, so say you're you're already on top of it, they're your little secret service people like going into the school and like figuring out the curriculum. I would also be, I would hope that any parent would be as attentive as noting little slights of, of change in behaviors because that tends to be something much more deeper. So just being a parent essentially, just being a caring parent because at the end of the day, all children need caring parents or guardians. Mm -hmm. And I think just being present and aware, and then also the other half of that is being vocal and being present at school board meetings, because that, when you're thinking about wanting to nip this in the bud, if it happens in your school district, get to the school board meeting, don't just hand it off to us, the gays against groomers, expecting us to be there, because we'll, we'll try our best to get there. But you know, we're only so many people. It is up to the parents, particularly, we love seeing dads at school board meetings because dads mm -hmm. are papa bears. They're going to come in mm -hmm. and they're just going to mess things up just to get things right. So changes in behavior and then school board meetings, those are two of the essential things to look out for. Yeah. And let your, and let yourself be known, you know, your, your presence as a father, it weighs heavily on how, how people might try to go about being sneaky. Cause that's what they're doing. They're, they're, they're being sneaky. They're, encouraging kids this stuff is on the record to lie to their parents about what's going on don't talk about these things mm -hmm. so the more of a presence you have the more chance and and also to the stranger danger stuff like don't let your kids know hey there i know it's awkward i'm dad you're the, you know we're i'm a guy you're a girl it's hard but there are no secrets between us like you can come to me for everything and you should whenever you question something that's what i'm here for you know, i'm i'm your father i'm the leader i'm the teacher i want to teach you even if it seems weird let your kids know that these kids are so afraid to talk their parents just because of the awkwardness of teen years and you know mom and dad don't get me it's 
they don't understand where they've never been 13, even though we've been there, done that, but you got to really kind of have, you have to have those conversations. Right. Absolutely. Right. And what I'm trying to do is, you know, cause I'm, you know, pro gay, I think, I think they should have all the rights and everything like that, but I'm, I'm against the extremes that you're talking about and waiting until they're older, way older as an adult to do anything in the trans realm, if that's where it goes. But how, how do we thread the needle though? You know, because how do we tell them, you know, Hey, it's okay. It's okay. If you be gay. At, at what age? Like I just, this is stuff, you know, that I always just ponder through my head. Like, where do I go from it being coming like a shaming type thing into like mm -hmm. an acceptance type thing, but feeling like I'm not also grooming. I don't know. It's just one of those things. It's just curious to get a take on that. I, well, I think... it should be, it, it should be up to you as the parent first off. Yeah. That's the thing that we're tackling in California is that those kind of parental rights are being stripped from parents. Cause now it's all of a sudden magically, you know, teachers now have access to these kids and they don't have to, they can keep secrets from parents in the state of California because of Newsom. And so, um, it should be an organic process if you were to have those kind of conversations with your kid. I personally, I don't think 10 and seven are the correct mm -hmm. ages to have those kind of discussions. Mm -hmm. It should be organic mm -hmm. and it's very different for every family. So, Absolutely. Well, yeah, and, and it is it is different for every family because at some time, you know, maybe it's a little sooner that you have the conversation about um, biology and these things with your kids. But I think, you know, it kind of, it falls into that same category as, as being a man, like how, how do I want my children to see that I love my wife? You don't really sit down and lecture them. You show them. And by being a good husband and showing up and, and, and even when you fight, you know, you, you, they see you come back together and have the communication and, and move forward. It's the same way with the, you out in the world. You're, these children are watching you. If you're a good parent, even if you're not, Sadly, these kids are watching you show by example. You don't have to have a lecture with them necessarily. You know, if you ever feel it's appropriate because something comes up, yeah, pivot and have the conversation. But just by leading by example and 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 being who you are, your children are already watching. They see that my dad's cool with this. Like he's not going around calling somebody homo this and, you know, the F word that. And so absolutely by example, man, your kids are watching you. Yeah, I agree with that 100 percent. All right. Again, the book is The Gender Trap. It's The Gender Trap. Dot com. So in this book, as it pertains to the trans agenda, there is a chapter about uh, what should happen, which is being it's very different than uh, what actually happens when you want to do the whole transitioning thing. So, Palace, what what's the difference here? Let's give let's give um, people that are going to read this book a little a little teaser here. What? What should happen is much different from what is actually happening, right? Yeah, well, you pretty much nailed it, and I don't want to give that part away. But I will say that what we're being told through the mainstream media, through trans lobby activists, through the public education system that is perpetuating this is not exactly what is happening in real time. What we're seeing is that kids can go into a therapist office 15 minutes later after they say, oh, you know, I'm suffering from, I think I'm a boy and all this stuff. 15 minutes later, they're given puberty blockers. And it's something where we have to reach a major consensus mass publicly about what this stuff entails, what are the dangers and the side effects. And as of right now, we don't have that consensus. I think the big major turning point, well, not really a big turning point, but a, a big little flag in our in our, our sales here was Elon Musk going on record saying, hey, I have a transgendered kid. This is what happened to me. I signed documents and then they were, didn't tell me specifically what puberty blockers were all of these things. So we're, we need these discussions to hit the mainstream. And that's when the Overton window is going to open. And then that's when the floodgates open, when you start hearing from the detransitioners that started to detransition when they were kids and then going into adulthood and having these kind of lifelong um, uh, effects from, from having this kind of gender affirming care. It's not even uh, care if we can really just be honest here. It's you're, you're mass mutilating an entire generation of children is, is what this is. That's a... And I would add that that's something that, you know, we need to start saying, like, I, I, I'm, I'm tired of hearing a gender affirming care. There's nothing caring about this. This is mutilation, sterilization. It's brutal. It's it's evil. It's I'm going to go to you, Samuel. I'm going to go to you right now. So it clearly it's very expensive when somebody wants to transition from one gender to another. <laughs> so it's almost become a thing where it's kind of like it's just big business. Right. So. So who's 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 funneling this this agenda? Is it is it big pharma? 
Is it the doctors? Is it who? Who is it? Who's behind it? Where's the money? Yeah, it's everybody. I mean, big pharma for sure. I mean, right now we have uh, bills being discussed in California for these safe houses for these children to where it's legal for them to run away from home to get funding for these homes. Uh, it's all about the money. Uh, Medicare, like the, it was like when we were going through some of the legal parts of it, it was like roughly like $94 million that were going to, and ensure to, to gender transition. And sure, some of that is counseling and that's important. I'm here for that. But even with that, you know, okay, let's knock off several million you're still highly in the millions of dollars of state money that's going to this stuff so you know it, it's absolutely big pharma it's it's the state it people's taxes like it's it's crazy it's all the money we always say you pull the money away this stuff will go it won't even be there anymore absolutely absolutely the left, the left feels like they would pull something of like hey these mm -hmm. this is they make them victims they like to victimize mm -hmm. everybody so they'll be like oh yeah the ta the, the transgender uh, surgery should be free for these people that's it's the mm -hmm. right thing to do and that will be a tax hike for us it feels like that's the route they would go it's know. also right, like you know it's also important to note too and i, I just want to throw this out there too ngos or even specifically um socialist or, or Marxist kind of organizations that have infiltrated the United States, we can see there's chaos everywhere. Of course, they're going to throw transgenderism into this. You know, it's all a concerted effort mm -hmm. to destabilize us and ruin this country. That's essentially what this is. And it's all it's happening all through Western societies. And very slowly but surely, the truth is coming out there. But at the end of the day, it's going to come down to what is the body count out of this? Because eventually this, this stuff, like all this truth is going to come to light The you know, what is the body count from this? And that's really what we're trying to tackle as soon and quickly as possible, especially here in California with Newsom signing laws into uh, signing legislation into laws that strip parents of their rights while giving kids access to all sorts of horrific care if we can even call it care but it, it's a concerted effort to destabilize our country is essentially what that is yeah and we're seeing through california the legislation we're, we're starting to see the scaffolding and what's happening is that first we know that they want control of children they want to brainwash their minds to have this woke you know I, uh, idea of life and, and and the way to live and now we're seeing through these bills that they're trying to um come to pass with is that they're going to be funding these homes so not only now are they taking your children away legally because they can leave at 12 years old, but now they're being paid to do it. So, you know, it, it's absolutely motivated by the woke ideology and, and money for sure, tearing down the nuclear family, ripping apart society, destructuring. If we, if we don't, if we don't have anything to stand for, what do we stand for? Right. If there's no such thing as gay men, what, what do I, what do I exist for? Christian men or whatever, you know, a family man, like you don't, if that's all gone, then what do you stand for? Nothing. And then it's so much easier than, all right, this is the last thing, and then I'm, we're going to let you guys go because I know you guys have lives. Palace, I'm going to go to you. The Olympics are around the corner, and in this book, again, The Gender Trap, it's thegendertrap.com. Hopefully I've I've rattled that off to you people enough. You know where to find it, thegendertrap.com. In this book, it is, it is discussed about w men who decide that they're going to be women on a Tuesday and then they start competing in women's sports and whooping all their asses in all their sports. And you got to imagine the women from centuries ago, from decades ago who burned their bras so that women could have rights and women can vote and women could play sports are now being dominated by men who want to pretend to be women to play sports. The Olympics are right around the corner. Should women be embarrassed palace like real women? Like women that were born women who stayed women, should they be embarrassed that men are allowed to dominate women's sports or what? Women shouldn't be embarrassed. They should be angry is yeah. what that is. Title IX, specifically Title IX, I think it's like less than 50 words. And the, the current administration wanted to revise Title IX. And now it's 1500 pages defining what a woman is. Well, not really defining what a woman is, but kind of finagling the language. 1500 pages pages compared to 50 words, like less than 50 words from Title IX. So women should be angry. And what I see here now is this resurgence of women being vocal. And 
women shouldn't be embarrassed to speak up about these things, but we also need the men that also agree with us to also fight for those rights too, as well, because it's the future is binary. It's not mm -hmm. a, a third, whatever we're want to calling that it's, it's binary. Um, but yeah, women shouldn't be embarrassed. They should be angry. Yeah. If I could add real quick, I, I agree. And I think men should be the ones that are embarrassed. We are designed by nature to protect women and we are allowing this to happen. And, and, and it is, I, when these conversations come up, I, I know I can't personally just take it all on, but it, it's embarrassing. Where are the men at protecting these women? I mean, that, that's, again, we're designed by nature to do that. Let me tell you, this is what I'm waiting for. And it's not going to happen because the WNBA doesn't pay enough. But I'm waiting for LeBron James to wake up one day and be like, you know what? I'm going to be a woman and just dominate the WNBA. But he's not going to do it, Samuel, for $76,000 a year. He just can't. Yeah. Well, let's extend his career about another 10 years because he could sort of compete a little bit. Oh, yeah, for, for sure. sure. All right. It is uh, thegendertrap.com. And just, just so you two know, Samuel and Palace, I have I have Carla Curtis coming on the show next month to talk uh, about this book. More, in more of a deep dive than what even what we did uh, tonight. So I first want to thank you, um, you two, for taking time out of your lives to come on here and talk with us about the gender trap, the trans agenda. I want you guys to keep fight, keep the fight and, and keep doing what you're doing. And hopefully one day uh, we will win. And, and I want to thank you guys. Seriously. Thank you for coming on. Absolutely. Pleasure Thanks for your time. Nice. Thank you. Appreciate thank you guys. You. Thank you.